We're in the Mew Lake campground in Algonquin Provincial Park. It was only supposed to be like a two and a half hour drive up here, but it wound up taking me most of the day because as you can tell, the weather is absolutely terrible. Unfortunately, my uh, electric snowboard isn't quite up to the task of being able to do a overnight backpacking trip on it quite yet, but I thought I would at least take it out with me with my Model 3 and do a combination electric snowboard Tesla Model 3 solo winter camping overnighter. Wouldn't be a Mike in the Woods trip without getting the friggin' car stuck. <laughs> All right, crisis avoided. I wound up going forward a little bit and then putting some momentum backward. I managed to get myself unstuck. However, as you can see, it's at a bit of a slant uh, once you get towards the electrical pole there. So I don't think I'm gonna risk it trying to get the car down there. I do have a hundred foot extension cord, which is exactly the scenario that this is for. So let, uh, let's get that unwound. <laughs> I did have to stop and supercharge once on the way up here, and I did the smart thing and charged all the way to 100%. That leaves me, even if I didn't charge at all at camp here, I still have enough juice to get from here back to a supercharger. There we go. That should do it. This plugs in like this, and plug in like that. We got green, which means it's charging at 1.2 kilowatts. I turned sentry mode off so that won't be sapping any power. And I'll just let it do its thing until, uh, until it's time to crawl in the back there. And I do have my tent if I want to go the tent route, but it seems super icy under the snow. I don't know if I'll be able to drive my tent pegs in. All right, so we're at 59% now. And the snow seems just the right depth to try and get my electric snowboard working, which is already covered in snow. And that's why I made a watertight. I didn't get a chance to buy any firewood. The uh, registration thing is actually closed for this park during winter. You can still register sites, but you don't have to sign in when you arrive. You just show up to your site that you paid for and be prepared to show your permit. And I get my mattress inflated. That's, that's really about it. That's all the prep I gotta do. <laughs> I'm gonna do this in one breath. You ready? How'd you like that magic? Well, I totally didn't just make myself almost pass out. What are you talking about? <laughs> there we go. Home sweet home for the night. All protected from the snow. All right, now what you really came here for, the electric snowboard. I know it's kind of hard to tell because of the snow, but uh, I have yet another piece of tread that I printed and put on here. Of anything, that seems to be what I'm going through the most is the pieces of uh, tread. ABS is not the right material. I tried to print a uh, section in nylon. I ended up getting a large globule of nylon stuck to the print head on my printer, and uh, I gave up on nylon for a little bit. You also may note that I have bindings on here now instead of those silly traction pads. Yeah, I finally gave up on those. They kept coming up with snow. So switched over to bindings. These are the ones that I got with it uh, when I bought it from the thrift store. Thankfully, they actually fit. I've never used bindings before on a snowboard, so this should be fun. All right, let's unpack this uh, waterproof box here and show you what I got in here. Can't really open it too much because I don't want the snow getting in here, but I got all three of my Eastgate batteries in here. That's almost a kilowatt of battery power. And my wireless remote. The wireless dongle up here. And we'll just uh, plug this into a random battery. And uh, close this all up before too much snow gets in here. So this thing is live. One thing I don't like is that I had to seat this binding, this rear binding by the wheel pretty far forward. Uh, in order to clear the base of the motor mount arms. I could try these loose and see how that goes. It gives me enough authority to steer at low speeds. Remote on. Yeah, 
Yeah, it just uh, digs through and grinds onto the ice. All right, let's try on a pre-established track. Let's see how that does. If I put my foot like right here, and the other one in the binding. Oh, we got some movement. Holy shit, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> wow, we we got ourselves an actual fair amount of distance. I'm all the way down at campsite 47 minus 59. We we came from all the way around that bend over there. <laughs> that is a lot more success than I thought I was going to get. I've been foiled by my nemesis, packing snow. So much snow is built up in here again that it's not rotating anymore. But still, that's awesome. I got a lot of distance out of that. I'm stoked. Snow thankfully seems like it's petering off too. Right, I think it's time to bust out that uh, stove and get some food cooked. All the snow that's hitting me is basically melting right away. It might as well be raining. Four canisters of eight ounce butane and the stove. There we go. Nice, dry. Oh, little sitting platform. That was easy. Whew, that smell reminds me of my airsoft days. <laughs> I feel like cooking a righteous meal right now. What do you think? Fettuccine Alfredo. Cheddar and broccoli. Uh, no pass. And I think it's Fettuccine Alfredo. And, uh, <laughs> You want to hear something dumb? I've owned this thing for a while and I only just realized that it does have markings on it for measuring. <laughs> Oops. It turns out a bit soupy. Oh. Self-igniting butane. Not have Mike explode himself. Take one. Ah, I gotta lock the canister in place first. There we go. Now, ah, ha, 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 ah, it actually works pretty well. And it's the perfect size for this three liter pot too. Put the lid on it to assist with that. So, well, that's uh, starting to boil and do its thing. Last week, I had a hell of a week, man. So me and my wife were coming back from somewhere. I was in the passenger seat, she, she was driving. We're coming down into our underground parking garage and she wasn't paying attention to how close a concrete pillar was when uh, we went to pull into our parking space and yeah as you're probably imagining right now my poor almost four month old model three and this isn't just scrapes like that's that's actually dented in there pretty bad oh i was not in a happy mood when that happened can't blame her because I've done some stupid stuff with my first car too. Accidents happen. We we had that Mazda for five years and nothing too major with it. And then four months into this Model 3 and I'm already going through insurance to get uh, two panels replaced. And potentially they told me the whole door might actually have to be replaced depending on how badly that's dented. Got a thousand dollar deductible to pay to the insurance company and then when my rates renew in December, oh, they're gonna skyrocket. And uh, remember I told you how my 3D printer screwed up and had a giant thing of nylon stuck to the printhead? Guess what day that happened to happen on? The exact same day. 
You ever have those days where the universe just tries its hardest to screw you over in as many ways as possible? Just get, get it all out at once? Yeah, that was, that was last week. Put that in there. A little bit of some probably expired milk powder. I'll let that do its thing. Yeah, I really like this thing. I think it'll be a staple in my uh, car camp kit from now on, my overlanding kit. Just a little stove for one. I don't imagine I'll be hanging around outside for too long today because it's going to shift from the snow into rain. So I've been slowly working on my website, mikeinthewoods.ca. Right now I've got my fully 3D printed buck saw and I've also got my 3D printed parts kit for the electric snowboard up there. If you want to help out the channel, that's the most direct way to do it. No, it's not exactly traditional overlanding. Not exactly an overlanding rig. I'm 100% committed to this whole EV thing. It's basically done, but it is uh, super soupy. So if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I got some extra soup base from an uh, extra packet of noodles. I'm gonna mix that in there, kind of make a broth out of it. Hopefully I didn't just make something super gross and nasty. Here comes the taste test. I don't hate it. And when that little stove is all done, it all packs up into this neat little case here. I don't know if you can hear that, but someone's flying a drone in here which is very, very, very against the rules, even a little micro drone. It's people like that that make it harder for the rest of us to be able to fly our drones. So the car is charging, which means it's pulling uh, over a thousand watts over this uh, cable. You can see it's heated up and uh, it's melting into the snow. We're already at 63%. So over the last couple hours, we charged up 4%, give or take. So yeah, it's right on par with what I expect. That's what I like about winter camping. It's always nice and serene. Campground like this, right on the lake. Haven't had one of those in a while. Really is a nice car, man. Both in looks and functionality. Yeah, Model 3 made a believer out of me. I don't think I'll ever own another gas car again if I can help it. Let's see if we can chisel out the snow on this because that was too good of a test run to actually call it quits for the day. My high-tech snow clearing instruments and this rain is more like ice pellets right now. All right, I think I got it unstuck. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, too jammed up already. Uh, I figure out what I'm going to do about the snow that accumulates. Oh, hey, that worked. Haha, -ha. it's a bit violent, but it worked. So conceptually, I think it's a sound design. I mean, it works when it's not bound up. I think I can deal with the, the packing snow binding it up by, uh, there's a sliver of uh, board left between the edge of the base plate and the edge of the wheel well cutout. Uh, trim that down and then maybe trim this a bit further back. The other thing is this rear binding is just too far forward for my foot to push down on the motor enough for it to dig in and actually want to move stuff. So what I think I'm actually going to do is uh, switch to a hybrid setup where I have a traction pad on the rear for the front. I'll have uh, the singular binding. I think that'll get the best bang for my buck. 
I'll have one foot locked in so I can actually steer it and the rear foot will still be able to press down and I could put my weight on the rear of the board to get that wheel to dig in. So if I could deal with that and I can get the packing snow to stop binding it up, I think I actually have a pretty solid design in place and then maybe it'll be time to move on to doing an overnight backpacking trip with it. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> we've pretty much reached the end of the season, so I don't think that's gonna happen this year. That'll probably be next year. But uh, lots of projects like that electric raft to keep us occupied in the meantime. So when you guys first saw me posting about this thing, did you think it was actually gonna work or did you think I was just full of crap? Truth be told, I sort of thought I was full of crap too, but it worked. Well, it's getting dark and uh, super rainy. So I think it's time to retire inside of the car for the night. Oh, 65. So it'll probably stay at 65% the whole night. Oh, I also gotta take this coat off because it's super wet. So I hung my coat up here on the uh, sun visor. <laughs> gonna make do with the space I got, right? So uh, that's hanging out there to dry because it is absolutely soaked. I got so much wet stuff in here. Yeah, it's supposed to sleet like this all night. Rain, snow, it's supposed to stay positive the whole night. Uh oh, my battery percentage went down to 64%. No, weird, the battery went back up to 65%. Weird. There we go. LED lights shouldn't consume too much power. <sighs> yeah, I'm getting pretty adept uh, at maneuvering inside of this car. So like I keep saying, like I'm, five foot ten ish and there's a lot more space in this car than you might think like i can sleep in the back just fine as i've shown and i think tonight i i'm not even going to get out of the car to get in the trunk i think i'm going to worm my way back there from the front through the seats here i'm going to dive in head first and once i'm back there i'm just going to kind of do the shimmy like i said last time after dealing with that little one-man tent for so long kind of getting used to it Oh well, it is 10.30, I'm getting pretty tired, brush my teeth, still pouring rain outside, you can hear it on the window. So anyways, I think I'm going to crawl in back there and uh, get my bed all set up. My uh, camp pillow has a hole in it, that's unfortunate. I guess I'm going to makeshift something else as a pillow tonight, that sucks. sleeping bags back here. I gotta worm my way over there. Yeah, I definitely gotta change out of my socks. My socks are damp. So since I've been in here last, uh, I don't know, hour or two, the battery percentage has dropped from 65% to 63. I don't know how much that is just cell balancing. Definitely me being in here uh, has caused some of it. Anyways, I did drop the temperature. I had it set to 19 degrees Celsius. It's now set to 16. So once I do that, once I stop opening and closing all the doors and letting all the heat out, I think we'll stay steady at 63 overnight. All right, kids, that's me for the night. This has been overlanding in a Tesla Model 3. <laughs> terrible drive, terrible weather, but we're making the most of it. All right, see you in the morning. Oh, morning. I actually had a fairly good night's sleep. Nice and temperature controlled in here. A little bit chilly because I had the temperature turned down low and I couldn't get my sleeping bag zipped up all the way. I couldn't be arsed to fix it. It's been raining and or snowing a little bit all night. And it's been above zero, so hopefully it's pounded down some of the snow. Yeah, it's a little bit slushy out there. All in all, pretty successful camp. I'm not going to lie. When I uh, was at the supercharger yesterday at the halfway point and how terrible the roads were, I was strongly considering turning around and heading home. Oh.
Normally I just leave this here as is, but I gotta make room for that snowboard. When I had checked uh, about five o'clock this morning, this had actually gone up to 69%. Right now we've dropped back down to 67%. But still, I wasn't expecting it to gain any charge overnight. I thought I was gonna stay flat, but we went from, I think it dropped down to 63%, now we're up to 67%. I'll take it, I'm running uh, camp mode all night. Only plug it into a 120 volt outlet. Interesting. That's why I like getting out and doing these tests and have uh, different times of year, different temperatures to compare how it does. So if I actually had managed to plug into the uh, RV electrical outlet, would probably be sitting on a full charge right now. My plan to hang this by the uh, sun visor actually worked out pretty well. Coat's completely dry. See, it was mostly rain last night, not a lot of snow, so there's a little bit of snow accumulation on top of my uh, tent and stuff there. Anything on the car is long melted. That's, a, that's some ice buildup on my snowboard. I guess uh, the thing to do now is just pack up the few things outside and hit the road. <laughs> even my chair is frozen solid. <laughs> it won't even fold. Uh, uh, fold. Uh, good enough. Uh, and this will become a righteous soupy mess by the time I go to pull all this out later. These cables are way too frozen for me to try and get them to fit back into this little bag here. Yeah, we did it. Well, the only thing left to do is just make sure I can get the car actually moving. All right, I think we're good. I just gotta make sure I keep up momentum on my way out of here because things are a little slippery. All right, with that, that brings this one to a close, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.